Hello everybody, this is Jenny and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. And this will be my very first ever shopping haul. Now, I don't typically do shopping hauls because I we're a family of three and people like to see the big family shopping hauls and all of that. Um, Timu hauls, I don't order a lot of things at once for me. I order a lot throughout the year, but I just, I get like an item or two at a time usually. So the haul that I'm about to show you is actually not just my purchases. This is a combination of purchases between my daughter, my mom, and myself. And we are, um, we're all avid readers. I have a nephew that's an avid reader and I have one of my younger nieces really likes books and one of my younger nephews really likes books. So, um, in this haul, you're just going to see what my mom and my daughter and myself purchased, but some of these things were for the kids. So anyway, I am a Barnes and Noble member. Here is my bag of books. Um, I got my membership bag for renewing my membership this year. And last year I got one in a color I like, and I use it all the time. So I just gave this one to my daughter. I picked a color she would like and got it. So I'm going to start with my, my favorite thing. This is what I actually went to Barnes and Noble for. Um, a few weeks ago I had been there and kind of looked at this book, but then I still went ahead and I shopped around online. I actually went there looking for something that I had seen in a video and I would love to tell you whose video that was, but I cannot remember and I cannot find it now. But someone had purchased the infographic Bible for their daughter for Christmas, like a teenage daughter. And I thought, wow, that really looks like something I would like, but I didn't just want to order it online. I wanted to be able to see it in person. I can't find it anywhere. Um, we don't have a lot of Bible bookstores in our area. I checked the one that I know about, um, the one that was closer, closed here a couple years ago. So anyway, I went to Barnes & Noble just on a whim because I know that they do have like a Christian section in Barnes and Noble. So, um, they didn't have it either, but the girl there was very helpful and, you know, listened to what I had to say about why I wanted this. And she found, um, a few books and one of them was this, this was, um, this is called then and now Bible maps and it's the deluxe new and expanded edition by Rose Publishing, and this is what it looks like. Um, I am definitely a maps person, but this has more than just maps. So um, I didn't purchase it that day. I went back and I'll tell you more about that trip here in a second, um, the trip that I purchased this. Because I did go to the Bible bookstore, I looked for something. So I could find nothing even similar in our only Christian bookstore. So, um, Anyway, I went back and I did choose this one. When I went back, there were less choices. So someone else must be onto this section of Barnes and Noble too, because when I went back, there were less choices, but this one was there. And I think this was my favorite. So, um, anyway, it has the maps like this of, you know, the land in Bible times. And then this is what it looked like in Bible times. And then you put these overlays and that shows you in red where the countries are divided and cities that are there now and things. So there are those throughout this whole book. Um, but there are also these charts. Um, there's this chart of Bible history, world history. So kind of a timeline per se. Um, more maps, um, dates of the Exodus and an Exodus timeline. It's got, you know, routes. Um, here's a page on the 12 tribes of Israel. So what I like this book for, it seems like a book of notes, um, about the Bible, like notes that you would take, um, when, when reading the Bible, only it's done for you. And it's organized in like such a way that I would take notes. So like here are the tribes of Israel and there, it tells a little bit about each one, like their symbol and the location, um, and then other notable things about each one. So that is a really, I mean, there is a page for the kings, a page for the judges, um, further down. I mean, there's like 
Jerusalem at the time of Jesus, and it has it laid out. Um, just really what you, it's more than what you would get in the back of most Bibles. So, um, what I, in the end of it, like it has Revelation, it has all of the churches, um, and their strengths, their weaknesses, instructions, and promises all laid out in chart form. So, as you go through the Bible, then you can refer to this, and you can see the routes that people took, um, have like a chart of, you know, the different tribes and where they lived and, and what they did. So anyway, on the trip where I went back and purchased that, it was me and my mom and my 11 year old niece and my six year old nephew. And while I'm in the, the adult Christian section, my six year old nephew realizes that he doesn't have a Bible. We had actually talked about it earlier at breakfast about my niece needing a Bible. And, um, he decided that he wanted a Bible. So we ended up going upstairs to the children's section and looking for one that we thought was appropriate for him that he also liked because, um, I know what's inside the Bible is what counts, but you know, the features like red letter and things like that. Um, if it's in a, a translation that they can understand, but you know, it's fun to have one that looks interesting as well. So we found him this one and it is the um, Know Your Bible NLV Bible for Kids. The How to Study the Bible Study Bible. So this will teach the kids um, how to study the Bible. And there are different pages inside um, that kind of explain it. You know, two testaments and 66 books. What does that mean? Glad you asked. And then it kind of explains that. Just different things like that throughout. It is, I believe it is red letter. And so while my mom and I were discussing the features that we liked in each Bible, and this one has a ribbon and he absolutely loves this ribbon. And all he wants to do is have it hanging out, I guess, because he likes the color of it. <laughs> I don't know. We've explained to him that it's a bookmark, but he'll get there eventually. Um, but when we were discussing what we wanted in the children's Bible for him, you know, what features we liked, uh, he just wanted to make sure that he got a Bible with Noah's Ark in it. And we informed him that all Bibles have Noah's Ark. And if it didn't, that would not be one that we would be buying because it wouldn't be a real Bible. But, um, I think he was just saying that because that was the feature he was looking for. So for my 11 year old niece, we did look in the children's section a little bit, but she's at that, you know, most children's Bibles, they say eight to 12 and she's already 11. So we decided that maybe she could go on, um, to an adult Bible. And honestly, um, as long as we're not doing like a devotional type Bible, I think that's probably the best thing for her. Um, she is not an avid reader. She is a good reader, but she just does not like to read. So she really isn't going to read the extras. So if we were to get her like a, a teen's devotional Bible or a teen study Bible, she's not going to use it as that. Um, she just needs a Bible, you know, for when she goes to church or whatever. And, um, when she goes away to camps and things like that. So, um, we got her a new living translation because I feel like that is the easiest translation to read um, and understand. And she definitely liked that feature. Um, we did get Words of Jesus in red and it does lay fairly flat. Um, but we also got her one that's larger print and she did want one with larger print. We did ask her and that was something that she herself did like. And this is her favorite color. So um, and she's very much a visual, um, like her artwork has a lot of color in it. So I feel like having a Bible that she likes is, you know, she's going to be more likely to bring it with her to church and use it. So that was important. So that's the one we got for her. Um, moving on. And then what we did, my mom ended up buying this one. It was a little bit more. And then I bought this one for my nephew. And on that trip, Mom and I also each bought something for the kids to do in the car. Um, it seems like we've had, between my mom and the six-year-old nephew and I, we've had a lot of appointments in Evansville lately. And that is 
quite a drive from where we live. So we're in the car for a few hours. And so we decided um, to get car things to do. And uh, so that way they're not just on an electronic in the car all the time. So um, we found these, they're stickered book annex. So they are reasonably priced. And um, we got this one called Find the Cat. And so this can be used over and over as long as you don't write in it, but it's just got a different picture on each page and you look until you find the cat in each picture. And there was a larger one, but the larger one didn't have as many pictures as the smaller one. And so that's why we went ahead and got this one that was only $8 because the $8 one had, and I don't remember how much the other one cost. I just remember it was more than $8 and it was, slightly bigger, like closer to this size. This one has like 219 find the cat pictures in it. So um, anyway, that's a fun one. They did use this on the way home that day. Um, and then this one, I have been looking at these for quite a while and I actually did buy one of these for a birthday gift for like a niece-in-law, I guess you would say last year. Um, but they're the sticker by number books. So you have a picture like this and then each little patch is numbered and you have your stickers in the back. You find the page and the stickers that you need for that page. And it's like a paint by number, but stickers, you've probably seen them before. We've just never had any. So um, my niece picked this one. I gave her a few choices. And so we got that and it looks like she has started it because here's a page that's got some stickers. I saw a sticker. Yeah, there's a couple stickers on this page. So something else to work on in the car or at hair appointments when you're waiting, things like that. Anything to keep them off the phones and the iPads. So the next one, this is the fun stuff. So I picked this one up. Just as a surprise for my daughter for some summer reading. She just graduated from college, so now she has more time to read for fun, and she does like to read. So I picked up this one by Abby Jimenez. I don't know how you say her last name, but anyway. Um, she likes Emily Henry, and Emily Henry says that this author is a true talent. So um, this is called Just for the Summer. So I picked that one up for her, and then... Are these, let me think, I think the, the rest of these are some that she has purchased. Um, either her or my mom has purchased these. Anyway, The Girls in Navy Blue, which is a historical fiction. And um, my mom and I both like historical fiction. My daughter's getting there. Um, so there's that one. And then another one, The Wedding Dress Sewing Circle. Another historical fiction that we can't wait to try out. And then, okay, so The Rabbit Hutch, I really have no idea what this is um, about. It says an online obituary writer, a young mother with a dark secret, a woman waging a solo campaign against rodents, neighbors separated by, only by the thin walls of a low cost housing complex in the once bustling industrial center of some city, I can't pronounce. Anyway, um, welcome to the rabbit hutch. Um, anyway, it sounds like it's just kind of a, all these neighbors living together and like their different lives and how they intertwine maybe. Um, by Tess Gunty, Gunty, I don't know how you pronounce that either. So uh, that sticker does not go on there. But anyway, it's a national book award winner. So it'll probably be a really good one. I always look for, um, I always look for book award winners because they are usually, they, they usually don't disappoint. So this one was on the buy one, get one half off table and it was the Midnight Library. Um, this one is really neat. I think this is going to be a really interesting, um, I'll just read the back. We all have regrets, choices we could have made differently, paths we didn't take, other lives we might have led. But what if you were given a chance to fix your past? Enter the Midnight Library. Nora's life has been going from bad to worse. Then, at the stroke of midnight on her last day on Earth, 
she finds herself transported to the Midnight Library, where each book contains an alternate life, a possible world in which she made different choices. She is given what seems like the ultimate opportunity, a chance to undo her regrets and try out each of the other lives that she might have lived. But things aren't always what they what she imagined they'd be, and soon her choices place the library and herself in extreme danger. Before time runs out, she must answer the ultimate question. With infinite choices, what is the best way to live? So that sounds really neat, kind of a, you know, go back in time and see how things would be different if you made different choices book. So, and it's not, it's not really big. I think it will be interesting enough to really keep your attention and you'll get through it pretty quick. So, so if you're not wanting something that's, you know, going to take a long time, that's probably a really good one. So anyway, lots of books to finish out the summer. I know we're already a month in, but yeah, so that's our Barnes and Noble book haul. And I wasn't actually going to review that one book. I was going to make a separate video for that, but I already kind of reviewed it for you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up. Hit like and subscribe if you got this far um, or if you enjoy book hauls funny videos of my cat that are usually in the form of shorts or gift ideas. Um, oh, and book reviews. I do book reviews. So anyway, hit like and subscribe. I'm almost to a hundred subscribers. I'm working my way. I'd like to get over a thousand, but anyway, we'll get there. So we'll see you next time. Bye.